Okay, Pete, North Las Vegas. This is part two of my Criterion 18 inch hybrid Aero Precision Handguard and New Frontier Armory upper and lower AR build. Uh, in part one, I ran into some trouble with the Aero Precision uh, bolt carrier group. And what ended up happening was I, I couldn't get it to headspace with the ejector still in the bolt. And for those of you that aren't familiar with AR platforms, that's the ejector and that's spring loaded. It's held into place with a pin and that's what kicks you round out after the, the rifle fires. Um, that's the original bolt right there. And you can see where the ejector used to go. Well, what I discovered was um, back here on this uh, drain hole, this anti drop hydraulicing hole you should be able to see the spring uh, and at first I thought that hole wasn't drilled out correctly I thought they drilled it too short but after I looked at it closer there's something stuck in here and I don't know if it's part of a drill bit or part of a reamer or whatever it is that got in there it's hard as a rock because I took a drill bit thinking maybe it was just some debris that got packed in there and that drill bit wouldn't touch that thing. And I, I used a titanium coated drill bit. Um, so whatever's stuck in there, it's, it's not coming out. I tried to use this pick to, to pry it out. And you can see daylight around the hole inside. So that tells me that, you know, they did drill this back to at least a hole, but there's something stuck in there. So I had a spare bolt and we put that in the, uh, in the uh, Aero Precision bolt carrier. And like I said, this was Aero Precision too. So I'm going to send this bolt back to him and say, hey, what's going on here? But anyway, solve that problem. Um, what your uh, Atlas handguard comes with is a barrel nut, shims, wrench, some attaching hardware, and a, and a small Torx wrench to uh, tighten the handguard on. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of anti-seize on the threads. I'm going to put a little bit of anti-seize on the the barrel extension here and put a little bit inside the receiver. Um, these have to be timed. The gas tube fits these little notches on the barrel nut. Um, there's a bunch of videos on how to install this. So I'm not going to show every last little detail of putting this on. Um, maybe I'll get lucky and I won't have to use any shims. But anyway, this, this has to be timed. And I already forgot if I already mentioned it or not, but the, uh, the barrel nut torque for the Aero Precision barrel nut is 35 to 65 foot-pounds. Now, if you're using a standard GI steel barrel nut, just for some added information here, that's 30 to 80 foot-pounds on a GI steel. But for this Aero Precision, 35 to 65 foot-pounds is, is what they're looking for. Okay, well... I think we're gonna go ahead and get all this spun together. Like I said, we'll do that off camera. Um, I can't show too much. I had, I had one of my videos recently pulled by YouTube. YouTube is, they do not support the First Amendment and they do not support the Second Amendment, um, especially when you're just showing legal activities. They, they got a problem with that, especially when it comes to firearms related content. I think their belief is, is that if I show too much putting this AR together, there's a possibility that Russia may invade Ukraine. Oh, wait a minute, that already happened. Okay, so that's not it. Uh, I guess they just don't like the Second Amendment and they don't like the First Amendment either. All right, so I've said enough about YouTube and uh, how they run their platform. I'll be using a Midwest Industries uh, reaction rod here to hold everything together in the vise while I, I tighten the barrel nut. So like I said, I'm gonna do all that off camera, get this barrel nut timed, get this gas tube installed, and that'll be most of the upper install. Okay, so there's the muzzle end of the barrel. Very nicely done. Uh, we'll come back onto the uh, gas port
gas port looks very nice. I'm not going to show you all of the grooves and the, the rifling. It all looks good. Um, we'll show you some of the lands here at the beginning of the after the chamber. Okay, and here's the lands. Okay, well I'm not like. Okay, so I got the barrel nut perfectly aligned. Didn't really get any better than that. Um, I got lucky. I did not have to use any shims. I ended up at uh, about 45 foot pounds, and uh, the barrel nut wrench that they gave me left a little bit of shiny metal. I mean, it didn't eat it up or anything. It just kind of knocked the finish off. So we. We got that touched up with some aluminum black. And like I said, I didn't have to use any shims, so I got lucky. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is put the gas block onto the gas tube. Um, once again, I'm afraid to show you how to actually do it. Uh, somebody at YouTube might get excited. So we'll get that put together. Um, something I did forget to mention on the barrel in the first video, and that's Criterion comes pre-dimpled. So you don't have to worry about that. Also on the Aero Precision gas block, the uh, set screws are knurled. They have little teeth on them, so they, they bite in. So in addition to your uh, your Loctite and the way the, the set screw's designed, it's I don't think it's gonna come loose. All right, well, let's, uh, let's get the gas block and tube on the rifle. Okay, um, getting ready to install the gas block. That is the correct set screw. It's, uh, it has teeth, it's serrated, whatever you want to call it, but that's, that's the correct set screw to put on a low profile gas block. So we're getting ready to put that on and I'm using orange. Orange has more holding power than blue, less than red, so it's in between. And on the orange, you don't need heat to uh, to remove it. So that's the plus. Has almost the same strength as red, almost the same temperature rating. Just don't need heat if you want to take things apart. Okay, so I'm getting ready to put the uh, the A2 bird cage on here. I'm just going to run a standard uh, flash hider on these uh, barrels that don't have a relief cut back here. Um, you might wanna, you know, kinda spend a little time picking out the correct jam nut if that's what you're gonna use. If you're using a crush washer, it won't matter. But if you're using a jam nut, um, this is a JP Enterprises and this is a Strike Industries. Now you can see that on the JP, or on the Strike Industries, it has a very little Very little uh, radius relief cut here on the jam nut. So they don't give you a whole lot of room to play with. On the uh, JP Enterprises, on this side here, you can see that it appears to have about the same or maybe a little bit less. But the thing with JP Enterprises is if I flip it over, now look how generous it is. You got a big, huge radius cut right here. So that allows more space Duh. to butt up against the, uh, the barrel shoulder. So we're gonna put the, uh, the jam nut on there and just see how this thing times up. Maybe I'll get lucky and I won't have to move the jam nut at all, just, just barely enough to where I don't have a gap showing on the side. So we'll see how all that works out. Okay, so that's the Strike Industries and you can see how much of a gap we have. That's as far as it'll go. Um, because, like I was showing you in the earlier clip, it, it just doesn't have enough relief cut to, to get past the part that's not quite threaded up against the shoulder. So that's Strike Industries. And then uh, I'll show you what happens with the JP on one side versus the other side. Okay, so that's the JP using the side of the jam nut that doesn't have as big a relief cut. You can see the gap there. Now I'm going to turn this nut around the other way so that the bigger part, the bigger relief cut 
faces the, the shoulder and you'll see that it butts right up against it. Okay, and that's with the JP jam nut on the other way with the bigger relief cut facing the shoulder. You can see there's hardly any gap at all. So we'll see how the flash hider times out. Maybe I'll get lucky and I won't have to turn that jam nut hardly at all. Okay, I got lucky. This uh, A2 timed perfectly with the jam nut flush against the uh, barrel shoulder. So that worked out nice. So all I gotta do, just barely kind of snug that jam nut up. You can see where it's, I don't know how well the camera's picking it up, but it, it like timed perfect. All right, so we'll get that all snugged up and then uh, next thing we gotta do is uh, get the handguard on. Okay, I've got one last little issue and that's this bolt carrier. I'm sliding it in. Starts to get a little bit stiff right there and it frees up again. And I swapped out a bolt carrier and it's not the receiver, it's the bolt carrier. Um, like I said, it, it just gets a little bit snug right there. Now I've pushed it in and out about a hundred times and it's, it's loosening up and I pulled the bolt carrier out and I can see where the nitride is starting to come off. So it's, this is just going to be a break-in issue. I'm going to go ahead and run this. And like I said, I'll, I'll manually run it in and out till it loosens up a little bit more and it should be fine. But anyway, that's the last little minor issue. Okay, even though it is a little stiff, um, it will go home and go into full battery. Um, since the last video clip, I worked it about 100 more times and it, it smoothed out quite a bit. It's still a little bit stiff. So the only issue I might still have is uh, this thing holding back on the last round. But as I was saying in an earlier clip, it's just gonna be a break-in issue. So if it's acts up a little bit, first 50, 100 rounds or whatever, anyway. All right, well. We have slapped this thing together. All right, here's one last look at the new build. 18 inch Criterion hybrid barrel. One and eight twist, wild chambering. That's a 16.6 inch handguard. And when I first started going with Aero Precision, they only made a 15 inch. So I'm glad they went with one a little bit longer. Let me flip the rifle around. We'll take a look at the other side. I haven't decided what kind of optic I'm going to run yet. It's probably going to be an LPVO, seeing how it's an 18 inch. And not too many options in my budget range. I don't know. I may end up with another Steiner. Anyway, Pete North Las Vegas, over and out.